Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome into the Learning Lab. And in today's lab, I'd like to share with you how to create your own speech bubble or a cloud using the free Canvas software available through Brothers Scan and Cut. So come on in and let's get started. Okay, first thing you need to do is to go to the uh, Brother Scan and Cut Canvas website and register for an account in order to use their free software. What I'd like to share with you today is how to create this cute little speech bubble, but what makes this one so unique is that the purple you see is an overlay. So it's kind of like getting a die cut and getting an overlay to go on top of your die cut. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so I'd love to show you how to do this. So I'm just going to take this one and drag it off to the side for now. We are going to start over here. I'll go back. When you first log on, you'll see my projects, basic border logo text. We're going to start with just the basic shapes that are available in Brother. We're going to go down until you get to the part where you see two bubbles, three bubbles, four bubbles. I know it's like a song. We're going to take the first one and click that onto our map. Once it's there, we need to right click and duplicate. Slide it over a little, right click, duplicate again. We're going to need about five of these. Now I have found when I don't move it a little and I try to duplicate, it won't duplicate for me. So now there we are. I have about as many as I need. So I'm going to take these and drag them off to the side. Now going back to my original, I want to take one of them and bring it up. And I want to basically just line this up. I'm going to make this a little bigger. There we are. I want to take this and basically line it up. There are some align tools that are available. You can use those if you like. Uh, this one's not that serious. Once I get them aligned, I want to left click and highlight everything. You'll know that both shapes are highlighted because I have two uh, blue bounding boxes. I'm going to right click and weld those together. Our shape is starting to take um, our shape is starting to take shape. <laughs> I want to take another one and bring it up, but this time I'm going to grab the green handle and turn it just a little so that my bubbles are on an angle. Once I get them turned, I'll go ahead and join it to the other shape that I made. Then I want to highlight, and again, I should have two boxes, and you can see them there. Go back and grab them again. Right click, and I want to weld that together. Now let's go down and grab another of these. I'm going to bring it up, put it here, but this time I want to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing by aligning that shape up with the others. Once I get it there, I want to left click, highlight everything. Again, I should have two blue boxes. Right click, and I want to weld. And now I basically have what I want to create. The only thing I need to do now is to put in that little tail that comes out of the speech bubble. To do that, we're going back over to the basic shapes. And this time you need to scroll up until you get to the little Pac-Man shapes, which are right here. Go to this one, click it, and bring that one in to your clouds. Grab the green handle and rotate it to the right. And let's pop that down into place. I'm going to take this back down to about 75 um, so you can see what I'm doing. And this one for now, I don't need it, so let me uh, pull it off even more there for if I want it. So now I have this shape and as you can see it's way bigger than I need it to be. You can right click and change the size or you can go up here next to the trash can the properties bar and it's telling me right now that this is almost four inches. So let's bring that down. And that looks pretty good. So now I need to bring this back over, not my big one, but my little one, make sure I'm grabbing the right image. And I have this here. I want to turn this a bit more because as you can see, this now comes straight down and I don't want it straight down. So 
I don't know why this keeps jumping in the way, but it does. Okay, now this is not the way I want it to be because it's not sticking out long enough. If I go ahead and select both of these, right click and weld, you can see this is not nearly as long as I would want it to be. So do control V, brings you right back, click on it again, and I'm going to click it again until I get the nodes, which are the editing nodes. This uh, will pull my shape in and out. If it has a handle on it, that means it'll turn it, uh, disfigure it, twist it around, do whatever it is I want it to do. To get back out of it, just hit Control Z, click it, click it again, and you get your nodes. And what I want to do is pull this one out some. Make it just a little skinnier. I think I like that. And if you need to turn it any again, just go back and grab the handle. Push it back in a little more if you need to. Once you get it the way you think you want it, just go ahead, highlight it all, right click, weld it together, and voila, there it is with my little tail hanging down. <laughs> now, I want to see what size this is. And it's telling me that this is, wow, almost four by eight uh, and a quarter. That's way too big. So let's start bringing that down. Uh, starting out, mm, I like to work with around four inches. So here is what I have. I don't want my bubble to be that long. I'm going to squeeze it in some. So if I go in, I know I'm still going less than four inches. So whatever I cut it at, it's going to fit on my card or on my scrapbook page really well. And I think I like that. Okay, two by three, pretty good to me. Now that I have the shape that I want and that I'm happy with, I'm going to make a duplicate of that shape. Pull that off to the side. Now taking this shape, I want to create an offset line. When your window pops up, you get some options. You can use it at two tenths of an inch, which is how thick your little rim is going to be, or you can take it down some. Um, let's do point 12. I want my offset direction to be on the inside of my shape and not on the outside. If I wanted to create a mat for this, then I would use the outside. But in this case, I want it to be the same size, but just to let my greeting on the base layer show through to the top. I'm going to leave my original as is, and I want my corner type to be round. And there it is. Now, shouldn't have done that. I want to highlight both of these. See, I have two boxes because I have two shapes. Right click, and now I want to subtract. And what that does is gets rid of what is on the inside. While I'm here, let's go ahead and right click with properties and put some color on there. And let's do red. And there you have it. So now my red can go right on top once I cut them out of my two different colors. And there it is. Doesn't get any harder than this. Um, the thing about it is that if you want to do anything to this, you want to change the shape or whatever, you need to do it before you make your duplicate. So let's say I make a duplicate of this one. Now that's the one I can play around with because those two are designed to fit each other. Here I can come back, uh, stretch this back out, pull it however I want. It really doesn't matter because this is a duplicate of the original one that I made and I can play with that and if I want the border trim to go around it I can do the same thing there so let's say for example I want a mat for this one then I'll just right click duplicate it drag it off to the side right click it again this time I want to create an offset and I want my offset to be on the outside and let's just make it barely uh, a trim so 12 around the outer edge Leave that, I want my outer edge rounded. Oh, okay, and there it is. So now, what I want to do is weld this so it becomes one. Let's go down to properties and create a nice little color for ourselves. Oh, that's pretty. And 
Now this will sit behind that one. And let's see. I want to send it to the back. There we go. And now I've got a border or um, a mat to go behind my speech bubble. Either way, you can toss some of your dies now. <laughs> I love this. And who knew? Just using the free software and the basic shapes that are available on Brother Skin and Cut, you too can achieve this. So if you haven't gone online and signed up for your free account, what are you waiting for? Come on, get busy. Lots of fun to be had. Uh, join me for a later video where I will show you where I've cut these out and how I plan to use them. As always, thank you for joining me in the lab. Please be sure to check out my blog at inkallusions.blogspot.com. Until then.